I've been scarred and I've been bruised. I have learned just what to do. I need to leave my past behind me. I need to look, look, look to the future. No matter what will come, no matter what I've done, I know just what to do. That's all because of you. To the regular subscribers, to our new people, to everyone that is just passing by giving us a chance, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Yana Mabumengwana. I am the regular face. And for a couple of weeks now, I have been having fantastic people to tag along. And today is no different. You've seen her before. You were blown away by her previously. And I know she is delivering nothing short of that generosity excellence and brilliance today as well i have here a good friend of mine tina Makumela. guys <laughs> if i bring you this person it speaks of my love to you and how seriously i take you tina is a gem you cannot remain unchanged after having a conversation with tina we've been going with that theme of bring some people people that look like me and you people made from flesh and bones that have done remarkable things despite looking ordinary and living ordinary lives she's the queen of ordinary brilliance i don't even know if that english makes sense <laughs> ordinary brilliance but she's that like if you just chill next to tina you wouldn't pair the brilliance with the person because she's just a person she talks like a normal person she looks like a normal person but her life is just it's inspiring to learn from um and i have her here today the queen of statistics come on <laughs> Uh, and in having her had a beautiful time in her life journey when she's just left full-time employment, brave moves, to pursue full-time <laughs> entrepreneurship. I mean, people that have watched our previous finance video, Tina has three properties, three. Well done, my friend, on finishing one of them. Thank you. Thank well you. done. Uh, and yeah, she has settled one of those properties. She's got two business properties at the moment. Tina has also opened another tutoring branch in PE. How many tutors do you have now, friend, in total? Above 100. Yeah. yeah. Ibra guys. <laughs> she has created a hub of brilliant <laughs> academics, brilliant tutors, and Tina literally can take you from 40% to distinction level in no time. She's got the anointing for it, even if she's not the one that personally does it. It's like she can screen excellence and other people can feed back that excellence. It, it's a salvaging tool. It's a beautiful thing to witness how someone can believe I can't do maths. Touch my groups once and then next thing jiggy jiggy when I are a scholarship candidate. So yes, we've got that person today. We're here to learn from how she approached her career, how she chose, I suppose, purpose over the world. You know, Tina is, is smart, you know, aptitude wise, yeah, game boy success your business. She's just genuinely really smart. Did her undergrad in at the University of Cape Town, did her postgrad at the University of I think it's West Virginia University in the USA. And then she came back. This person you are learning masters. Hey, you and then she decided she's going to work for an NPO. Yeah, now nah, she's not going to come act, you know, on this on this genius resource that she had just went <laughs> across the country to go pursue. And shortly after that, she went to be a lecturer at Rhodes University, and that's the post she's coming out of now. And she exited on on such a high. Tina was actually I could have a point of friend awarded, awarded yeah. at <laughs> teaching award by the vice chancellor of, of Rhodes University. So it's a it's a brilliant entrance. She entered at 23. It's a brilliant exit. That's how good she is. I keep on telling her friend, it was never the job. That was brilliant. You're brilliant. You're brilliant. Everything you touch turns brilliant because you did not encounter a brilliant opportunity. But you're a brilliant person. So yeah, even now we'll be brilliant because that's who she is. It's never the opportunity itself that's brilliant. Welcome, my friend. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, we are going back on again on this channel. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Let's just get it before varsity. Yeah. You're also coming from just a regular high school. Yeah. Right? You're coming from a regular high school. Take me through the kind of demographics you come from before your city. Sure. So, grew up in Mangawel, um, Kuluso, Mama, and Grandmother. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so both of them sold fruits and veggies. So that's like the family business. Um, oddly, for some odd reason, um, in the area we grew up in Motherwell, um, we we the to to Hanga basically, um, which is basically a cul de sac. Um, and our house and another house were the only shacks in the cul de sac. Every other house was an ordinary mm -hmm. house. Yeah. Um, so yeah, 
yeah, so grew up in a very loving family. And yeah, this is how I was big. So we were, I don't know, the warmth that my grandmother brought, I think invited the other kids to always be at our house. Um, so sekule njalo, sekule kwale ya tinasekaya, always, you know, pictures as we almost moshagele that we always can, you know, nimble on um, with other kids. And yeah, so that's the kind of home that I grew up in. Um, I think the love sort of like overshadowed the the lack that okay. you know when I look okay. back now I'm like, yo, I was so hard on us. <laughs> <laughs> like we were struggling, right? Um, so that's the kind of background I grew up um, around, but a very loving home. Um, very Christian based. I'm video. <laughs> just <laughs> <using> my <laughs> Very Christian based, so Sukulele in the Catholic Church. Um, Makulu always took me to different things like her stock files. Um, part of the business, so that's the kind of background that I come from. Um, school was an important aspect to my grandmother, um, education um, was very, very important, and now when I look back, I think also financial literacy was very important to her. Um, so that's the home I grew up around. Um, those are the people I grew up around. I have three siblings. I'm the third born um, of four. Um, so yeah, so that's, 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 that's the home I grew up. You went into statistics. Did you know that beforehand? Because for that kind of yeah. family, there also tends to be a limitation in terms of exposure to, to information and career options. So much that smart people just go for mainstream, yeah. well-known yeah. careers. That was unconventional. Uh, for that kind of background did sure. you deliberately choose to go into stats <laughs> no <laughs> i didn't even know what statistics <laughs> was <laughs> um i only found out about stats when i was at university so um you know and it's it's sad to know that even now the lack of career guidance at schools that we experienced is still, um, is still is still present so um we just you know were looking through the prospectors at the UCT and we applied a couple of us from our high school, New York High School, which is in New Brighton. We applied to go study at UCT and I chose um, a degree under the sciences um, and that degree was biotechnology. And did it just did sound fancy? Sounded nice. I mean, <laughs> it really sounded nice. So that was the reason why I chose it and you know, I was accepted um, to study that. I didn't even know what it looked like and you know growing up in families where such conversations don't happen not because but because people don't have that kind of love it's not like a normal family or rather you know a family that has knowledge knowledge about those things where you occasionally host who's a clinical psychologist and that kind of language is there. In our home, it wasn't. And in many homes, it isn't. So um, career guidance was a huge gap in terms of, you know, um, what we experienced um, and what continues, you know, um, to be a challenge in the education system. So, um, and I think it contributes quite a lot in terms of the, um, the number of failure rates we see at universities, the number of academic exclusions, because it's not like those kids are not brilliant. It's just that sometimes the things that they choose aren't the things that are meant for them, right? Um, and Undu then chooses something because it's glorified either by society, um, by oh, okay, Ubangutrecha is the thing and nothing else. So they go for that irregardless of, of, of anything, any other evidence. So exposure was, was you know, limited. Um, but I think what guided me or what helped me quite a lot is speaking honestly about things I love. So in my first week of orientation, I remember speaking to this guy and he clarifying options that are there for me. So um, in terms of what is what is available under the science faculty. So and what was nice about the BSc that I did is that you could pick and choose um, um, mm -hmm. things. Yeah, exactly. So he explained to me that there are these other options. You say you love mathematics, so um, I, I think pick applied maths, pick pure maths um, as you know as a possibility of it as a major, and pick statistics. I didn't question him. I 
trusted his advice because I thought he knew better. He's a lecturer at Bates University. And yeah, so that's how I bumped into statistics. So that chose you. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> basically. 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 Again, another unconventional move in international postgrad. Sure. You know what? I think I think that one is is just being positioned um, at the right place at the right time. Um, and also again, um, you know, surrounding yourself with people who will say amazing things about you even when you don't believe them, you know? Like things that like you were saying at the beginning of the video, I'm like, I'm listening to you, I'm like, oh, oh yes, is that me? Okay, okay. I'm a bit, <laughs> you know. Um, and and I really believe, you know, in the role of mentors, um, because of that, you know, um, because they see something in you that you don't see in yourself, right? Um, so in that case, it was someone, you know, from the organization that sponsored me, which is Ubuntu, um, saying, you must apply, just apply. And I'm like, hey, is this lady okay? <laughs> Like, does she understand first of all in South Africa you do three years of undergrad, then you go then you go to a master's. Now, you are saying I mustn't do honors, go take a doing, you know, specifically for a three year program. So I applied because someone else believed in me. Um, it wasn't something that I would say I aspired to, you know, um, to, to I wanted it uh, from a young age or whatever. It was just hearing someone else saying, this is the other possibility, you know, and yeah, and that's how that opportunity came. So from undergrad straight to a master's sure. program. Sure. Now, friends, that is a, it can be a rewarding profession. Yeah. Um, especially if you're good at it and you happen to yeah. be incredibly good at it. Yeah. Um, and you are coming from a place that needs money. Yeah. Um, but you returned from the USA. The opportunity to make brilliant money was there. <laughs> um, and you had the prestige and the aptitude and the competence, mm -hmm. you know, to be positioned well in industry. Yeah. And that's not what you, you, you chose. Yeah. That's not what you chose. First Ubuntu, then Ubuntu Rhodes. Yeah. Why? <laughs> sure. Um, I think it's one of those things where passion is louder. Um, I think each and every one of us have, you know, a calling of some sort, right? Um, and I think it, it, it gets loud at different at different levels of your life. I think for me it was too loud at that point, <laughs> whereby, you know, it was so, uh, you know, where you sit down and you're like, I'm not, I'm correct. Like, I'm not happy until I follow something okay. that, 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 that is very aligned to, you know, what I think I was born to do, right? So as much as those those tick boxes were there about his stats, but you've got the degree, you did well in your masters, you know, all these things, they're there, they are checklists, but you're like, but I don't feel the same way I feel when I'm in front of the classroom, the way I feel analyze the data. I don't feel the same way when I see a smile on someone's face who didn't understand a particular concept you met. And I explain it to them and I break it down to them and I'm like, there's something that, 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 that happens inside when I'm in the classroom or when I'm with a student, whether it's one student, a group of students that I didn't feel as much when it comes to stats purely as a career. So, um, so for me, I think education isn't something, it's sort of like was knocking throughout my journey, um, but I didn't conceptualize it as a career i didn't think that you know education is a thing because even our teachers said like it, it, it was that thing that was looked down on but that's not one of the options that you look at as a smart person these are the options and usually i think it's coming from a generation that had lack of opportunities um where it was Bunesi. And that was it, right? So they wanted better for us. So doing a BSc was like big to them um, because they didn't have such opportunities. So I never looked at, at teaching as a possibility, but when I look back in my journey, I see how it's, it's always, like it. yeah, it's always been there whereby we get invited to an NMU um, incubator maths program, but I'll be so pulled to make sure that 
as much as I went as part of the top 10, you know, um, so you see the link of, you've always loved this thing. You've always loved this thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then I suppose a very big part of, of where you landed up, even if it was, I suppose, originally from, from a place of need, mm -hmm. was your property acquisition portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, and now you have a hostel, mm -hmm. and you have a township digs, and you have a home. <laughs> Um, and I know your property feet are itching again. Yeah. Again, property love and teaching. Mm. I wouldn't <laughs> ordinarily have, I wouldn't it ordinarily have yeah. seen them, but yeah. it's another big love of yours. Sure. Um, profile that for me sure. somehow. Yeah. I think it's also part and parcel of what I was saying earlier on, which is always feeling the need that, you know, the thing that I think I'm called to do must always fit into whatever I'm doing, right? So I remember when I was buying the property, so I was buying the property because I was tired of renting, right? Um, but I remember when I was I was buying it and I was thinking, what's the safest way to buy it? I was like, oh, Grandson is a, you know, um, a student town. Um, so how about I buy a property that will serve two purposes? One, um, a place as a home for myself, and the other aspect of it, basically. So it does two things at the same time. And for some odd reason, in an advance, <laughs> my sister and I, my younger sister, decided that it would be a brilliant hostel, you know, um, this idea. And it was it was like it's answering a problem that I've always had, which is, you know, I've always imagined hostels to be a particular thing, all right? And I didn't have the 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 you know the privilege of going to to a hostel, so I had this idea in my mind. But it was the and um, it came out of a frustration of every time I you know I interacted with my sister who lived in a hostel, I was like, but why are they not doing this? Why are your academics not taken care of? Why isn't they like you know part of and parcel of this package? involving this and this and this and this because this is what it means to build or to mold a high school learner to make sure that when they end up at university they are ready for these things so so there again the property then ended up being combined with education to respond to the need of but can't we have a comprehensive hostel um that answers you know or that seeks to answer most of the questions that you know i have when i interact with university students it's coming there again, friend, because when we discussed the purpose of the video, it was exactly that. Yeah. I think there's something very shameful to a lot of people who are not knowing, not having the wisdom and foresight to choose something intentionally and feeling like you're not wise enough sure. to make good judgment calls for yourself and literally everything of yours was just an accident. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of logic, sure. it, you know, you didn't set up with this smart, brilliant idea sure. And decisiveness you're like this off rent this is what, how i'm going to turn yeah and this is like where me and you completely differ sure. like always it's like <laughs> winging things with your back like, oh that's a nice idea let's go you know i've learned so much from yeah from that teaching her how to have a plan and her teaching me to to just realize so no yeah. man yeah. uh, there is a possibility a very high possibility of tremendous success even from when the fit finds you or when you just act on it on impulse and instinct to be like feels good feels like a fit let's try it out trial and error can work mm -hmm. so i'm talking to the people that feel like i didn't go to business school i don't really know how to conceptualize a proper business model and i'm interested in forming a business and an enterprise mm -hmm. for the hostel for the township digs for the tutoring mm -hmm. the business model for tina is common sense she doesn't have a model in the way where she can say to someone follow it this way it's tried and tested I, I downloaded it from this place it's like it feels right I'm gonna try it like this and then she continues to, to, to do it that's mainly your business approach yeah. everything that you do yeah do you need not feel the pressure to have a business plan <laughs> at some point <laughs> like a proper business plan with the right headings and segments yeah how how can you just because the enterprise mm -hmm. is growing that PE is an, another offshoot sure. Of it that speaks to its success and strength sure. and grams down if it can birth another mm -hmm. new one. Mm -hmm. But you're running your business according to I say gut feeling, for sure. lack of a better word. I mean, I think I, I grew up in an entrepreneurial home. Um, yeah. I grew up in an entrepreneurial home, 
and um i grew up around people who every time they saw a problem they wanted to fix it there wasn't paperwork that's meant to be done before years ago. I know, I paperwork <laughs> you know, there wasn't there wasn't this thing of I always get frustrated when people say, I want to do this, but like lack of funding. As much as I understand some ideas, so like the bigger version, for example, would be to build a school. Yeah. Um, but I'm the biggest believer of starting small. So how do I answer that problem with what I have right now? Um, I guess it also has to do with your upbringing, but you do what you do what needs to be done. What needs to be done? If you go in your face, net that be low, zoom paris, basically, right? So you don't think about, oh, I can't eat right now because there's only potatoes and rice, right? So you're like, oh, says command as we to try to make food from last week. We can move on. So I think it also has something to do with just keeping it moving to some extent. So to say, yes, the idea is to have a big business um, that has branches across South Africa, but that's not where we start, right? But also trusting the inner voice is, is important. I mean, it's not something that, you know, I would say is easy. Um, it, it's a hard one because it's not like you've got evidence. There's no science that says you're making the right decision, right? Sure. Um, I mean, you will know how I wrestled with the decision of resigning because I know what poverty looks like and I know that I don't want to go back there. So to take a decision like that was a very hard one. I, I wrestled with that decision because to some extent, you know that, you know, umsebenzi will always have a salary for the name and business doesn't have that. So um, it's so important for one to think about those things but you also have to jump at some point you also have to like be like Ish, enough i've thought enough and i think it's the right time now and i call proof your back it is certain there's no certainty that we can we can be provided with so jumping at some point is so necessary um otherwise you'll stand still in our new one so trying and testing it out and seeing that i i said Lindsay, because there's businesses that have worked in Zenzile, but there's also businesses that didn't work. But I wouldn't have known that the ones that have worked would have worked if I didn't try. <laughs> um, so it's that hard thing of saying the banana, I just have to be bold and move forward with this. And if I say Benzanda, I just have to, you know, know that I'll have to mourn that period of my family Sebenzi. So Kali Mariam and all that and all that and just keep it moving. And the thing is, feedback is information. I think we get so anxious about bold moves when we need the information to be particular data. But when you're entering a thing, feedback is information, including the feedback that you tried that wrong yeah. or you tried that prematurely. That's information. And all we need to make a decision is information. But I think it comes with so much shame when that information isn't rewarding. Yeah. You know, like you should have known somehow. Sure. No, decisions are information seeking opportunity. You're forever seeking information. And it requiring this information and use that information and make a new decision. You use that information mm -hmm. and make a new decision. I suppose it speaks to self trust as well because yeah. although you don't know a lot of odds, for as long as you know you, you're not entirely clueless. Sure. You know, um, so I, I'm learning a lot from Tina because she knows herself, she knows what she's done. There's parts of the journey that you don't know. So I know the vehicle, I know the route. As for the climate changes, as for the roadworks, yeah. as for whatever else lies on the journey can only be discovered on the journey. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you just need to think car ready, me ready, <laughs> serviced, <laughs> touch, let's, let's, let's go. <laughs> let's go. So for people that are contemplating a a jump, yeah, let's there's go. an element of boss that you're not going to have. Mm -hmm. It's like I think, I think there's as far something, as you can see. I think there's something sorry to cut you. There's yeah. something you've said around trusting also the the I think self-trust to, to some extent, but basically trusting that if you've been able to build a table before or trusting that if you've been able to build something, something before, before I can build you it. can build again. So so it's collapsing. Um, the strength of you to build again is there within you. So it's collapsing is okay. It's not okay, but it's, it's okay it's because it was. <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, it's a, it's a hard thing because you're like, so, Utiba, Mandibu Gale, 
we okay, let me go in knowing that there's a possibility that it will just collapse, but trusting that actually the ability to build that business. And you know, again, collapsing to me is information. You know, there's nothing <laughs> frustrating like things that don't know what's going on. When it collapsed, you know what's going on. Sure. It collapsed! Sure. You know? Sure. Um, and then someone said this to be a friend of mine. I was scared to make him move, and I'm like, this is water, this is dangerous. Yeah. And I can drown, you know? <laughs> it's, it's, those are all facts. So yeah. it backfiring effects, man. It can very well backfire. Yeah. But as I said, you're jumping in because you trust your capacity so to swim. swim. Yeah. You're not trusting the water and its depth. You trust your capacity to swim, you trust that you've surrounded yourself in, with enough swimmers to jump in should you fail. Mm -hmm. So Bongo should buy a pen leg um, as well. Friend, there's a, another big love of yours mm -hmm. and it ties in well with this lack of paperwork and funding and that is financial literacy. Sure. And I suppose that's one of the biggest lessons that I've learned from you. Mm -hmm. Just the old fashioned way of put money aside. Yeah. None of your businesses are funded by anyone else. Mm -hmm. I wish you will get funding at some stage, but as successful as they are at this stage, they haven't been financed by anyone. Mm -hmm. And how did you get around maintaining that portfolio sure. with your own finances? And you were a lecturer, mm -hmm. academics are not wealthy, mm -hmm. and you still had, I suppose, for lack of a better word, a huge black tax. Yeah. You know, being one of first generation, um, I suppose, prototypes sure. in your family. Sure. So it's not like they went, they went difficult odds mm -hmm. stacked against you. Mm -hmm. Something as basic as home is where you need yeah. to start. Yeah. And so you're not financed and the businesses have grown. I think it goes back to the starting small part. It goes back to the starting small part and also knowing your limitations. Um, I can't, I, I couldn't have compared myself with someone who started differently sure. um, than I did. So um, someone else's worry clearly would have been extending their home. So the home was existing. For someone else, it was, if I go right, I just need to deposit for my flat. And in some instances, actually, the parent will buy the, 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 first, the first apartment, right? So it's also sticking to your lane and knowing back from those different uh, scenarios, where do you belong? And, and, and you know, um, what do you plan to do in, in where you belong? So, so there's certain things that, you know, might mean that you have to sacrifice that um, at a particular, you know, there's these things that society expects of you at a particular age, but in the tilumenunai, in the tilumenunai and whatnot. So to, to, to also learn that actually I, I might have to wait and have it later helped quite a lot in my journey. Um, so for me, you know, I think growing up in lack, also like made me wise financially because I was like I don't want to be there again right so it also meant that you know I was very conscious of but for and for but the kind of person where I'm like when is the next pay date right I want to make sure that I guard myself and I say sort of build a safe, a safe net around me to make sure that deny or something to fall back on but it's not easy right um it's not easy i think lots of you know people who are first you know generation um graduate um graduates of Mabu, or even second in some cases um it's difficult to take the salary that you have and do the the things that you need to do right so sometimes it means you you give up this to make sure that this is done so sometimes it's a give or take situation where you're like I want to build this business and this is what this business requires it requires me to um go without it will be a malady or it requires me to go without in the tea so it means that you hold that while you're busy with the skins and but when you're done with this you like check and then you move to the next thing and then but the safety net brilliant insights always unfortunately the limitation is time um but my cops is a brilliant hub for learning. Uh, for for mommies, it, it would be one of the best investments you've ever made for your child. Every time I go to China's hostel, I'm like, "Yeah, go now, BNB." Nah, it doesn't look like a hostel at all. Yeah, I'm so blessed, so fortunate, um, and she's brilliant at it. On top of going to brilliant schools, imagine enhancing your brilliance by making sure when you come back home, it, the environment is equally enhancing. 
of your odds. I cannot wait to see them finish tertiary and see that they're just going to be a different breed of humans. It's in Grahamstown for people that are interested, uh, but for Kabeha residents, my course is also in the Bay, which is the <laughs> tutoring um, company now. So please go turn your 15 to an 18. I can vouch for them. You know, I can vouch for them. Run by a brilliant person. Uh, you're really, really in safe hands. My friend, thank you so, so much uh, for coming. Guys, thank you so much for ever being so receptive. I uh, say goodbye to my people. Bye, people. Bye, people. <laughs>